Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and this is Lindy Stitches where I talk about cross stitch. I design under the name Lindy Stitches and I stitch under the name of Stephanie Webb Cross Stitch Addict. Not really. You won't find that as one of my usernames. I'm just Lindy Stitches, but I am a cross stitch addict. I am in the man zone, okay? So do not judge me for my lack of womanly touch out here. Like there's an afghan shoved between the wall and the bookcase. Guessing there's a draft there. Thank you so much for watching my last video about Nashville Needlework Market where I gushed about anything and everything. Thank you for your sweet comments. Um, again, such a supportive community and I'm so proud to be a part of it. The first thing I want to tell you is that I got to talk to Gary Parr for his Fiber Talk podcast a few weeks ago, and Gary is fun and amusing, and the hour flew by. If you would like to listen to that conversation, I will link it down below. I do recommend the Fiber Talk podcast. No one else is doing podcasting but Gary, and you know he has a full-time job, so the fact that he's able to put out two, two what do you call them, issues to recordings, uh, the word is escaping me. Uh, the fact that he's able to put out two podcasts a week is incredible to me. Um, he is the sweetest, funniest, down to earth human being and he's really fun to listen to. So I think you should check out his podcast. Link is down below. The second thing I want to show you is my dog, okay? How I became a person with a dog is a long story. I might launch into it at the end of this video so that the cat people can leave, but the dog people have been an untapped segment of my audience and so I'd like to talk to them at the end of this episode. I'm still not a dog person, but we can talk dogs later. However, here's Fred. Okay. This is Fred. <laughs> He is a retired racing greyhound, aren't you, Fred? He's five years old, and he joined our family on a foster basis um, in the last week, and we are really enjoying having him in our home. Um, he's huge, um, and yet he's not huge, because if you know anything about greyhounds, you know that they are incredibly skinny. So Fred is five years old, he's been doing nothing but racing and living in um, sort of livestock conditions since he was a mere pup, right Fred? And we're fostering him, which means he is learning how to be in a home. He's learning how what it means to live in a family and be loved all the time. Um, he is incredibly sweet and wonderful. And we love him. Right, Fred? Okay, we can talk more about Fred later. Let's talk finishes next. I have two finishes to show you. The first you have probably already seen. It's on the cover of Pinch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. This is the spring issue that just came out. And this was my contribution. I can show you the actual pillow. Looks like this. So this is going to be a series for me. There's going to be four all together. And they're all going to be those old weather proverbs that people told each other to understand and predict the weather and the seasons and animal behavior. I think those sayings are interesting. They fascinate me, and I love this one because it has to do with robins. It says, three snows on a robin's tail and then spring. It's always been a habit of mine to watch for the robin's return. Uh, we do not see the robins here after the weather gets cold, and then when it starts to warm up, it's always fun to watch for them again. Obviously, this proverb is not like a universal truth because not everyone has robins and 
Maybe the robins like vacation with you in the winter. I don't know where they go. Where do they go? But I thought this would be fun and I think the robin is adorable. I gave him a whisper scarf and so you probably can't tell but it's really fuzzy and adorable. And then these are all spring flowers, but what they are, I don't know, because I am not a gardener. So I just finished it up with some Lady Dot trim, some lace that I had in my stash. Uh, this is stitched on something. I think it's Ariel by Picture This Plus. And I used just a mix of flosses, I think... Weak Sty Works and Gentle Arts for the bird and other stuff for other parts of it. <laughs> if you're interested in this pattern, it is only in this magazine until next year when it will be listed in my shop. So that one is called Three Snows. My next finish you have seen me working on, I started it in August of 2017. It was a birthday start and I've kind of whined about it because it has been a tremendous amount of work. But this is called Autumn Cat Sampler. The pattern is by Cooler Design Studio and the artist is Nancy Rosi. This piece, <laughs> this piece, uh, like I said, was a lot of work. It's not, it's, why is it a lot of work? I, I don't know, other than it's a lot of color changes and a lot of fiddly back stitching. Um, a few months ago, I finished the Winter Sampler, and that piece is also by the Cooler Design Studio, but it's by a different artist. And that one has just as many colors and just as much back stitching. For but for some reason, that bigger piece felt like it was less fiddly than this small piece. And like I said, to not totally sure what the reasoning is. Yes, I do. The back stitching on this one is much more of like a abstract drawing effect. Um. Whereas the back stitching on the winter sampler is more outlining. So like if you can see in the, the corn and the grapes and all those mishmashy leaves, all of that is back stitched with different colors and it's more like drawing and less like um, just doing outlines. Maybe that's why it's more fiddly. Honestly, I don't know. It's gorgeous. I love it. I will not do any of the other ones. Um, very vibrant and beautiful. I don't know. I did this on 32 count antique white. I had originally started on um, something I had dyed myself and it just wasn't giving me the contrast that I wanted. So I really think it looks best on white. But that is going back into the closet and waiting its turn for the framers and I'm glad it's done <laughs> are you ready to see my works in progress me too because I haven't seen them for a while <laughs> I probably haven't seriously stitched on these since February but you haven't spoken to me in a really long time so They'll be new for both of us. This is Woodland Santa by Judith Ann Griffith, an old leaflet by Dimensions, and I just did a little bit of work on this one. I'm doing this on 32 count stone gray Lugana, and that is where Santa is. I just worked on the border. It's not exciting, is it? Okay, let's put it away. Next whip I'd like to show you is my Chatelaine. I'm really digging this thing. I need to get back to working on it because I am so far.
I have four out of, what, eight? <laughs> I'm halfway done, right? Yeah. Maths. I'm halfway done. And this thing is so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. Look at it. The snails and the spiders and the caterpillars and the mushrooms. Did you just die a little bit inside? Because you should have. So I think since you've seen it last, I did this square. And I just love this thing so much. It's so great. I just did my, my dog segment so that I could put it at the end and there's like, oh. there's dog hair. All right, that's my Chatelaine. It is called Mushroom and Fern. It's by Martina Rosenberg, who was a genius. Next up is Bag Ladies. This is an old kit by Sunset. I'm going to show you the cover image so that you can know what it will look like when it's done. It will look like this. And I will hang it above my great white throne in the living room so that everyone knows that I'm crazy. Wouldn't it be great to put this in like a giant like ornate frame? Like a giant white ornate frame. Like it was like an expensive piece of art. Goals. Here's where I am. I put another cat in a bag. He's chilling. Moving on. All right, my next whip. So I went down to visit the Fancy Works boutique, boutique, what am I talking about? I went down to visit the Fancy Works Retreat. I went down to visit the Fancy Works Retreat in Bloomington, Indiana this last weekend. And I decided to bring this piece because it's easy. And how smart do you have to be to stitch with one color in the right space? while you're talking. It's my long dog samplers piece. And the answer is you have to be way smarter than I actually am. Here's what it looks like. Because I stitched for probably a good hour and then ripped out everything that I stitched because I started in the wrong spot. So here's where I am for now. I am doing this in the color Ecru. DMC and the fabric is Abyss by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And if I was a professional, you wouldn't be able to see through it right now, but I'm not a professional floss tuber. Despite may what you may think about me. There you go. Here's what it looks like. Isn't it great? All right, my last work in progress, I want to show you, and I am so excited about it. Now, in between the time that I've come home and now, I have started a new pattern that I'm going to release in June and finished it, and it looks awesome, and I will show it to you in June. Then I started this one, and I am so excited about it, I don't even know what to say. I can't tell you what it's going to be, and this will probably be the only time I will show it to you. But I want to show it to you because I have things to say.
put something behind it. One person knows what this is. The rest of you can live in mystery. So this is Oaken by Picture This Plus. It's a 36 count and for the first time I'm stitching with one strand of floss. One strand of floss. And I love it. It's so funny to me how you can participate in the same craft and you just, here's, here's how I am. I'm like, I hear all of you talking about one strand of floss, it's so great, it doesn't twist up. I'm not a, like, I'm not super critical about my stitches, so I'm usually stitching with two strands of floss. I'm always, I, let's change that. I'm always stitching with two strands of floss, unless I'm back stitching or working on my chatelaine or something weird like that. I'm always stitching with two strands of floss. I am not a fiddly person, okay? So everyone's like, oh, well, it's better because there's, I'm mocking you all. Oh, well, it's better because it doesn't twist up on itself and all that. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, the only time I go back and fix a stitch is if it's obviously laying really wonky and it's showing way too much of the fabric. I don't look at every stitch and make sure it's, like, perfectly smooth. I, I don't. And so when I hear you say, oh, one strand of floss, it looks so neat and stuff like that. I'm like, that's great for you. I love two strands. Well, I wrote this amazing pattern that you're going to flip your gourd over. And I decided to purposely size it so that it would fit in an 11 by 14 frame. So that you could stitch it and you could frame it yourself if you want to. That required me to go to a 36 count and stitch with one strand of floss for the first time, and I love it. I love it. So if you would have asked Stephanie a week ago, like, hey, wanna stitch on a small count with one strand? Wanna use a smaller needle? I would have said, no, why would I want to do that? That's stupid. I like using a big needle. I can grab it better. This is so, this is great. So I just want to, I wanted to share that so that if you're a weirdo like me and you don't take the advice of others, <laughs> try it out. Um, I am not interested in 40 count at this point, but haven't I learned anything? I'm sure at some point I will be stitching on 40 count with one strand and saying what everyone else is saying because we're basically the same person. It's just that some people are further along than others. This is where I'm at. 36 count with one strand. I was concerned about the coverage. This is not the first time I've done 36 count. The other time I did it, I used two strands because I like everything very saturated, but to be honest, and this is not perfect saturation with one strand, it's not perfect, but once you look at it this far away, or you take your, you take your readers off, it's really fine. It's really great. I love it. Look at it. My camera's not going to focus. It's wonderful. Take my word for it. And when you see this pattern, you're going to freak out. You heard it here first. Next up is haul, and I'm going to show you some fabric colors. If you didn't watch my last video, I told you that, well, you, you weren't there, but I said, <laughs> I said I'm going to share fabric, fabrics that I get because I have been helped by other people sharing fabric even though I thought it was really boring for a long time, someone else helped me out by showing the perfect fabric color for a project I needed to do. So if you're not interested in fabric colors, you know where the fast forward button is. And if you don't know where the fast forward, forward button is, you tap the right side of your screen. Okay, so you can just do that now. Does anyone else find themselves tapping the right side of their screen like on apps that don't do that? It doesn't work. Okay. This is all picture this plus. This is all picture this plus because I'm in love 
I'm in love with picture that has plus. Okay, this is doubloon. Beautiful. Legacy. Want to see the difference? Okay. Doubloon and legacy. Legacy is, is lighter and it's greener. Heritage. Heritage is green. Heritage, doubloon, legacy. See? This is velt, and it's crazy. Regency, I love this color. You're not gonna be able to tell what it was. So let's bring out all the star players, okay? So the top is Regency and the bottom is Heritage, see? It's a little lighter and less saturated, more spring green, beautiful. Pewter is gorgeous. It is a gray blue. This is Arctic. It has uh, areas of green, so it's like a frozen blue with green splotches. Pewter. I hope someone is finding this helpful. <laughs> Pewter and Arctic. This is Bramble. Okay, Bramble is beautiful. It is a light nougaty. Nougaty is not a word. However, if it were, that's what this would be. Okay, Bramble is like the younger sister to shale. It's the same color, only much lighter. So if you like shale, you will like this one as well. All right, that's Picture This Plus. Yes, I did purchase these. <laughs> okay. The only other haul item I have to show you is this. This is I don't know what it is. It's Santa Ornament Delivering Yummies by Homespun Elegance. I went on a romantic giveaway, getaway. I went on a romantic getaway and my husband's so romantic because he let me just go by myself to the cross stitch store. That was totally romantic. This is so cute. Um, I kept picking up patterns and I'm like who is this homespun elegance oh my who did that homespun elegance and so Sandra Sullivan I'm into what you're doing it says yummy I think it's hilarious Those are all the haul items I have to share with you. However, I'm going to go grab something that someone gifted to me that I think you might be interested in. Okay, I've talked about the fact that I don't tend to share the gifts that I receive on my YouTube channel. And I talked about the reasons for that, like, last October or something like that um someone said to me like oh I was gonna give you a gift but I don't think you like gifts because of what you said and I was like well that wasn't what I said <laughs> I don't know I like gifts to be personal that's all I'm saying and so if you share the like I just that's my that, that's my mo if you give me a gift, it's between you and I, and I don't necessarily have to show it to the world, but this one I want to show to the world because it came from England. Brittany at Ingleside Imaginarium brought this back for me from Bath. It is a copy poster of Jane Austen, her sampler. Isn't that awesome? It's really beautiful. It has holes in it. And I love it. I love it. I think I'm going to frame it. Because I think if you get some distance, you might even think it's real. 
but um, the little info sheet that came with it says that it is in private ownership in case you were hoping to buy it. It sold for £2,000 and there is no reason to think that it's not authentic. Jane would have been about 12 years old when she when she stitched it. And it was examined by the Victoria and Albert Museum by really smart people who think it's authentic. So how cool would that be to be to see in person? But I have the poster. Thank you, Brittany. I love it. You can probably look that up online if you want to read it. Okay, I have three more things for you. The first is a tip about lacing that you might want to hear. The second is let me tell you about my dog. And the third is a poem. I don't get a lot of feedback about the poem, but perhaps you like it and you're just not telling me. Or perhaps it doesn't matter, you need more poetry in your life, so listen to the poem. So here is my tip about lacing. Now here's my, my MO. I will watch tutorials and I won't always follow them. I like to kind of fly by the seat of my pants and learn as I go. And so if someone has actually said this and I absorbed it and then thought it was my own idea, I am sorry. I really think I came up this on my own, but it's highly possible that I didn't. And so what I like to do when I'm finishing my stitched pieces is I like to take my foam core or my mat board or whatever I'm finishing on and if I'm framing I will pin as you know shove your pins into the side of what you're mounting on I will pin it and then I will lace it I like um, I like the extra tension and extra straightness that the lacing on top of the pinning gives me. I feel like only pinning I cannot get tight enough to satisfy me. There's still looseness that I don't like. I might actually even just give up on the pinning and go straight to lacing because I like it really tight and I also like the flexibility that lacing gives you. You can still kind of straighten it as needed. So anyway, I don't know what normal people lace with, <laughs> but I had been lacing with either regular all-purpose sewing thread or a couple strands of floss. I was using the sewing thread and then I, it was breaking on me. Um, I It couldn't handle the tension that I wanted to use to lace and so it would break. It was super frustrating. So I switched to a few strands of floss. That was a little better. But the problem I had with both of those options is that what happens when you, like when you're lacing, and this is a piece I just laced, you use a lot of thread. So you're going back and forth. You use a ton. And unless you want to be finishing off and starting a new strand, your piece of thread needs to be eight miles long. Well, what happens when you make an eight mile long strand of thread or floss? It knots up on itself. It's super annoying because you're trying to keep your tension as you're doing the stitches and the stupid floss is knotting up. So one day, for whatever reason, I decided to use this stuff and it is called upholstery thread and my camera is not going to focus. All it says is coats upholstery. And this stuff is incredible. It, I, it feels like it has a coating on it or something, or it's just really thick thread. I don't know exactly what the, the deal is with it. It's nylon, that's why it's nylon. It's extra strong, it's extra thick, and best of all, it does not knot up on itself. You can make a you can go to your neighbor's house and back and make one long strand and it will not make a single knot. It does not, it's not able, it's not able to knot up on itself and it's amazing. And I don't know if you can tell on this piece I laced with it, but 
My piece is so tight, you could play it like a guitar. So, yeah, I love it. And um, I have the tendency to maybe make them too tight. You definitely don't want to be able to see it. Like you can see the waves in this fabric of how tight it is. You don't want to be able to see that on the front. The front needs to look straight and you shouldn't be able to see um, the places where you are pulling on it. But this looks great and I, I highly recommend. If you would like to try out lacing or you've been lacing and like me you've had a lot of issues with it, try out some upholstery thread. It's amazing. All right, this is the more about Fred segment. Fred, show them your beautiful puppy dog eyes. Fred is so cute. Fred is so sweet and wonderful. Um, so I have always been a very staunch and stern, no, we're not getting a dog and stop asking me mother. Uh, we do not have a fenced in yard and the yard that we do have is very small. I was not interested in walking a dog multiple times a day. I had many reasons why we were never getting a dog. And then my oldest daughter started walking dogs at the Humane Society as a, just a volunteer weekly thing that she liked to do. and. I saw her light up in a way that I haven't, I don't normally see her, uh, kind of, she's just so enthusiastic about it. Then I read an article about how Florida was phasing out of live dog racing and that a lot of greyhounds, not all at once, but little by little, are, we're going to be needing homes. And I don't know why, but I started to look up um, fostering greyhounds. What really excited me is that greyhounds are incredibly, incredibly lazy. This boy sleeps many, many, many hours a day. Um, he does like to get a short romp in, but other than that, he's the laziest mutt you ever met. And so the, <laughs> the idea that we could have um, dogs every now and then and enjoy them and do something useful uh, really appealed to us. And so that's how Fred ended up in our home. We haven't had any issues with Fred. Um, sometimes they do have slight um, housebreaking issues. And so we were prepared to handle that. My, dog, my husband and I have both had dogs growing up. So dogs aren't completely foreign to our experience. But the only issue that we've had with Fred, he's been a very, very good house guest, haven't you, Fred? No barking. Greyhounds are pretty quiet. Um, another thing that I was interested in. The only problem we've had with Fred, do you care if I share this? He's a kleptomaniac. Aren't you, Fred? He loves to steal things and then put them in his crate. Um, and so, back up, buddy. What have you stolen? He's stolen pillows, blankets, dish towels, laundry, socks, hats, scarves. Um, he tried to steal my kitchen rug. Um, he attempted, he's attempted to steal like full-size queen blankets, um, body pillows. He tried to wrestle that into his crate. Uh, he stole the cat's bed and put that in his crate. <laughs> he really wants to make a nest. And yeah, we've padded his crate. Greyhounds are very bony. And so um, he needs a lot of padding, but he does not need a whole dragon horde of all the household's soft things. Do you, Fred? Do you? I'm going to sign you up for a support group. Anyway, that's my dog for the next couple weeks. And then I think Fred is going to join his forever home. And maybe I will introduce you to our next project. But I just wanted to share more about Fred because I thought, you know, maybe there's some people out there who are also interested in being foster dog parents, temporary dog people, dog owners, dog walkers, and then return to the comfort of their dog free existence. Um...
Let me tell you about my dog. <laughs> Last part of the video is a poem that I selected for you. I hope you like it. It's from Good Poems by Har for Hard Times by Garrison Keillor. The poem is called The Happiest Day and it's by Linda Paston. It's about spring. It's about pausing your life. And being happy in the moment. It was early May, I think, a moment of lilac or dogwood when so many promises are made, it hardly matters if a few are broken. My mother and father still hovered in the background, part of the scenery, like the houses I had grown up in. And if they would be torn down later, that was something I knew but didn't believe. Our children were asleep or playing, the youngest as new as the new smell of the lilacs. And how could I have guessed their roots were shallow and would be easily transplanted? I didn't even guess that I was happy. The small irritations that are like salt on melon were what I dwelt on, though in truth they simply made the fruit taste sweeter. So we sat on the porch in the cool morning, sipping hot coffee. Behind the news of the day, Strikes and small wars, a fire somewhere, I could see the top of your dark head and thought not of public conflagrations, conflagrations, but of how it would feel on my bare shoulder. If someone could stop the camera then. If someone could only stop the camera and ask me, are you happy? Perhaps I would have noticed how the morning shone and the reflected color of lilac. Yes, I might have said and offered a steaming cup of coffee. I hope you can say yes too. I hope that you're doing well and I'm going to StitchCon, I forgot to tell you that. I'm going to StitchCon, I hope that I will meet you there and that we can hang out and stitch and that I can put all my stitching in the right spot. Be well, keep in touch and do good work. Do good work, keep in touch, be well. I forget the order, <laughs> bye friends. Fred. Is that yours, Fred?